All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming and welcome to the Newark Public Library. This program is being streamed live via the Newark Public Library's Facebook page and will be available for review on our YouTube page next week. Uh, my name is Ann Schatz, and I'm a librarian specializing in business reference at the Newark Public Library here in Newark, New Jersey. On behalf of our director, Jocelyn Bowling Dixon, and the Board of Trustees President, Dr. Lauren Wells, we thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, we are pleased to welcome Shade Jones, who will be interviewed by Kimberly S. Williams for Fashion and Business, a discussion about fashion entrepreneurship. Shade will share her experiences as a fashion designer and share advice for new and aspiring creative entrepreneurs. This discussion is the fifth in the series, Creative Games, Becoming a Creative Entrepreneur, sponsored by the PNC Foundation in celebration of the Newark Public Library's soon to open makerspace for creative entrepreneurs called Made at NPL, which will include two sewing machines, a serger, a cricket cutting machine, and other technologies for creators of all kinds. First, I'd like to introduce our host this evening, Kimberly S. Williams. Kimberly is an award-winning business owner whose accomplishments have been recognized by the World Economic Forum, Rutgers Business School, the Star Ledger, and the New Jersey Small Business Development Center. She has appeared on New Jersey television, one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato, and you can hear her TED Talk, The New Majority, on TED.com. Through Kimberly's experience launching FemWorks, multicultural digital marketing agency in Newark, New Jersey, she realized that the local business environment was not well organized to help her navigate to success. Compounding that was a culture of competition instead of collaboration among small businesses. Through determination and social savvy, Kimberly made her way to the tables of power as a change agent, representing the voice of, small, of the small business community, determined to elevate black and brown entrepreneurs so that they are positioned to benefit from and contribute to the city's economic resurgence. Please help me give a warm welcome to Kimberly S. Williams. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. And welcome everyone to the fifth installation of Creative Games, where I have the opportunity to speak with amazing entrepreneurs and inspire the next generation of creative entrepreneurs. And today I have the distinct pleasure of sitting next to Shade Jones, the owner and operator of CB Dreamhouse. And I'm gonna start with a brief introduction of today and just really see where this conversation takes us because I'm, I'm really excited. Shade Jones was raised in the South Ward of North where she opened her shop, CB Dream House Boutique in 2012. Shade has an associate's degree from Catherine Gibbs School and attended Caldwell College, where she majored in criminal justice. At her shop on Bergen Street, she sells custom-made shoes and other designs where you are the head designer. And I understand you're also a cosmetologist. Yes. So many things to your creativity. Now, tell me, when did you realize that you were even an entrepreneur? How did you get into the game? Um, well, I, I can remember being young. I always had to dress. Yeah. I always used to say, like, I'm going to own a store. I'm going to own a store. I never really knew what kind of store, but I knew that I would own a business. And um, I... Nicki Minaj, you know, everybody. I remember Nicki Minaj. Okay. And my name was already Barbie, so my nickname was Shaw Barbie. And I remember she dropped the album, and everybody went crazy. Everybody wanted to be Barbie. And that was already my name. So I traded it. I started making shirts, leggings, hats. I was actually selling them out of the trunk of my car. So I was, like, doing deliveries to different neighborhoods. All the girls wanted to be the Barbie. How, the how old were you at this time? I was 22. And um, I had all the apparel and I was selling it and selling it. And I can remember a lady who had a clothing business 
and it was struggling. She was like, oh, you're doing so good. I want you to come in and help me with my business. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work out, but it made me want to get my own store. And within a week's time, I was a business owner, but all I had was Barbie and Barbie merch. And, um, you know, the season was changing, and I had, like, little pieces in my store, but not enough to make a boutique a full boutique. And I can remember just sitting down, just coming up with different things. And I was like, I wonder how some fur going to look on some boots. And I put the fur on the boots and I told my first picture. <laughs> when they sold, I just was, uh, that was it. That was the business. And then uh, in addition to that, I started making the fur jacket and the headbands and the gloves and all the pieces that go with it, the pocketbooks and accessories. And uh, over time, I started making clothes and more and more things. So and here we are today. So, but I just want to go back a little bit. So you mentioned starting out of the trunk of your car. Out of the trunk of my car. So how did you make the transition from the trunk of your car to a boutique? I've always been business minded. Since a young girl, I've always been business minded always been uh, a husband and coming from where we from in the city of north all you can do is hustle and i was too big for the trunk of my car i was literally from north to north north to south jersey and i was doing too much traveling but i was making enough money to get over here and i remember the day i got the overhead actually it was a really really good day for me and also a sad one because I lost a good friend of mine right in the midst of opening my business. His name was Forty. Rest in peace. I can remember him saying, "Let him do it. Just do it. I promise you. Even if it get rough, I'll help you. You'll never fail." And right in the process, he passed away. Literally days before I opened up, and uh, and then that was a rough transition too. But I just happened to, you know, make it through. And but I knew, like I trusted him enough to know that he was going to be there to support me. But God had me as well, as I ended up doing it on my own, even without him. But even with him in spirit, I do know that. And, uh, so you know, it was it was just it was a different kind of push. It was something that nobody had, uh, ever said to me, like, yo, if you do it, you guarantee the win. And I didn't even really know I was going to win because, like I said, I really didn't even know what I was doing. I just know I wanted to be a business owner. So I went in with my eyes closed and came out with my eyes open. So, I mean, as I was reading your bio, you talked about, it talks about your background in criminal justice. So what inspired you again? I mean, I hear you, you always wanted to look well and look great and look fabulous as you do today. Thank you. But really, what, what inspired you to go into fashion? Coming out of criminal justice, right? Um, but a criminal justice thing, I can honestly say, I wanted to be a lawyer since I was a little girl. You know, you go to school, they say, what do you want to be? I always used to say, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. But as I got older, that dream got distant. And fashion was the way. It was up and coming. I was up and coming. Um, to see him on my second outfit changed. And so it's always been fashion. Even when I was in school, I always, everybody like, oh, you look nice. You always best dress. You always put yourself together. And so fashion was always a part of it. I just didn't know that I would own a store. But I've always been in things for fashion. How long did it take you to evolve as you did, you know, from, as you said, creating T-shirts to then putting fur on boots? And then what was that journey like? It was a one-year transition. It all happened in one year. Um, because I could even remember I was designing rain boots even before the um, fur. In my house, I had this little apartment in Hillside. 
I used to put the little glitter on the boot to make the different design. And it was a it was a, it was a year span. It it genuinely was. It was a good one too, because it felt good to be doing something. Literally, it felt good to be doing something. It felt good to be able to sell me as the brand. Always tell people they'd be like, "Oh, Stevie Greenhouse, what's that? What's the brand? I am the brand. I marketed myself." So even though people saw the image of Nicki Minaj, they saw the image of me. I was Barbie way before she even really came into play. And so that's what made it work out. The transition was very easy. It wasn't a hard transition. The hardest part of the transition was actually being in the store, having the overhead, because I did have bills to pay. Um, and they was coming in and they was coming in fast, but I was trendy. I was a topic and you know, the girl supported me. So was there a, a moment early on when you were like, or can you remember a moment early on when you were thinking, man, I, I really am a business, you know, like this is, this is more than a hobby. This, this right here could really be something. A lot of moments, even today, even right now, it's like, you really here, you really doing it. I'm sitting on a stage with God knows how many people watching it's like, that's the girl from Chadwick. That's the girl. Because I, I didn't have an easy story. I'm going to just tell you. And even I changed my name on Instagram because I wanted people to address me as Shade. Shade's really been through a lot. Yeah, I come from the juvenile justice system. My whole entire childhood, I was incarcerated. I can really remember being from youth house to youth house, from facility to facility. From school to school, I went to like non different schools. I was a very troubled teen. Um, I even went away to a program called Valentine in Borton Town for 18 months. And in that time, I really had to run and think for myself because there was no family there. It was me and a bunch of strangers who had to learn the hard way that life really ain't that hard. And so even coming up out of that, even to finish in high school, even to going to college, it's always one of the wow moments like, you know, you really doing it. And people are like, how you go from, you know, being locked up and always in trouble to, to ending up in college? Or really it was my last year. So I did go to like six different high schools, but I graduated from East Aha. And when you are in these juvenile facilities, there's always a lot of TV. I can remember watching Hannah Montana all the time, Nickelodeon all the time. And I said to myself, if you get a chance, be like the girls on TV. When I went to Eastside, I became a cheerleader. And that was like my only full year of high school that I was in one school, no trouble. I joined the debate team. And it felt so good. It was like, this can't be the end. But it was because it was my last year of high school. But it wasn't because college was an option that was available for me. And uh, that's how I even found myself in college. I ended up going to Catherine Gibbs where I got the Associates of Criminal Justice. And then it was like, you need more. And I ended up going to Carwell. And when I went to Carwell, I did my internship at the North Pub um, Prosecutor's Office. It was rough, you know, people telling you what to do, telling you when you can eat, telling you it was they they wasn't showing me what I went to school for. And I'm like, well, if your first couple of years are gonna be like this, you might as well just go ahead and find a new profession. And that was working for myself. So when you decided to work for yourself and you had this opportunity to be on trend with what was happening in, in the industry, music industry and fashion. What would you say was one of your biggest challenges early on? Um, just being me. Because people hate authenticity. 
um, being me was a challenge. I always had people say like, oh, she thinks she's better than everybody or she thinks she's this or she thinks she that. And nobody never sat back and said, she really just trying to make it. So when I thought that I would have like a lot of supporters, I turned out to have strangers supporting me. Like everybody who I felt like would be around me to push me and uplift me and make this business thing work for me. It was, it was nobody. It was late nights in the shop by myself. It was early mornings by myself. It was days where the business wasn't even really moving. And I had to put my feet to the ground. I had to get out there. I had to pass out flyers. I had to introduce myself to people. I had to go around the city and make my, my name known just to let people know, like, I'm more than just the girl who think I was. And, and I want it. I want it, and I'm not going to stop until I get it. And here I am today. Oh, that's so inspiring. And, you know, authenticity is the bedrock of everything. And so I, I wonder in those early years, because, I mean, we're here to really inspire folks who might just be starting out, who are just becoming comfortable with themselves and calling themselves a creative. What did you do when you realized that you didn't necessarily have the support from the people you thought it would come from? But you were in a position you needed to build a team of support for yourself. How did you go about putting together a team to support you? I believe in myself. See, when people look at you and they see consistency, it motivates them. Well, everybody was like, oh, I want to work with her. She's doing big things. She's driving nice cars. I want to, I want to be a part of that team. But it's really all because I believed in myself. I stayed on top of me. I made sure I had everything that I needed. And when people see an image, that's the one that they actually want to live. And so the people started coming to me. Hey, are you hiring? Are you hiring? What are you hiring for? And I just start putting titles out there. I start making up titles. Are you the assistant? You, you, you had a, you know, uh, back in the shirts and, you know, you in stock and you the manager. And I remember a point in time where I had like seven employees in this little old store. There was literally seven of us. And I did my best to make sure that, uh, that my workers was the highest paid in the boutique business because typically a boutique pay you any, anywhere between 150 to 175. I was trying to get them at least 200, $250 a week because I was only just a small business. It's like, if I didn't make it, I still had to figure out a way to get them a check. And I just kept my head held high and it inspired me. A few of the people who actually used to work with me own their own business right now to this day. And so it feels good to even be a part of that. And uh, so, but really cons consistency. Consistency is the key to anything. Like if you really, really want to make it, and you really stick to it, the people will follow. You have to stay with it. You can't come up off of it because the minute they see you back up, they feel like there's no hope. And But it really, really is. Just keep going. Don't stop. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. And I have to say that to y'all because it was plenty of time where I was discouraged and it wasn't nobody to say, don't be discouraged. I had to say it to myself, but also I go to church. So I'm a strong believer in God. So I always believe that God would just work it out for me, no matter how it played out. And, but just don't, don't give up on yourself. When people see you doing good stuff, they tend to follow. They tend to want to know more about you. The more they get to know about you, the more interested they are, the more they talk about you, the more other people are interested and the further along we get. Do you have any tips for someone who might be at a place where they, they're hiring their first employee? Like, how do you go about hiring a first employee? Any lessons that you learned? A lot. I would say, if you was to hire a person, 
hire the person that do that job. I say to people all the time, everybody have a job. Some people don't understand it, but that's just the reality of it. Like, if you work on a garbage truck, you know exactly what you're doing with garbage. Why would I hire somebody off the street who have no experience in it to shred up all of my paperwork and make sure that it's stowed away the right way? And so hire with the, it's, it's kids in college, communication. Um, it's people that go to school just to be an assistant for Fortune 500 company. If you hire, hire people that fits the description. Don't just hire people because a person applied for a job because then you'll find yourself constantly telling a person what to do. If you hire somebody who is already within a description, they already know what to do already, which makes your job a little more easier. And it makes your day flow pass because you know that they got whatever that job is under control, no matter what it is. Like I said, whether it's stocking, garbage, assistant, manager, director, all of the above. Make sure it's somebody that has the experience in the job. If not have the experience, have the passion for it. There's a lot of people that get jobs, they really just want to work. A lot of people just want the check. They just want the money. And you paying them actually makes your job harder because in the end, you find yourself doing your job and your job. That's real talk. But having learned all that you've learned, what is it that um, you would say the most enjoyable part of owning your own business? The hours. <laughs> <laughs> the hours, the, 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 the time off, the, the, the ability to take the time that you need. Because I want to say that mental health is real. And I say that because it's a lot of people who have lost their business in the pandemic and a lot of people who have lost their business before the pandemic because they didn't know how to take on the pressure. Everybody's not really good under, under pressure. And so a lot of people always end up losing. A lot of people have lost within these last few years. And so um, they spoke with Stay focused. Don't let nobody knock you off your, off your game. Stay focused. Even if you feel like it's just you. Even if you feel like there's days where you can't make it. Better days are coming. And the sun always come out tomorrow. So what are you working on now? <laughs> uh, as of lately, I just started a new business I have went into motivational speak guest speaking I have a new company it's called it was all a dream it's all a dream because really it is all a dream even to me because even though this is like I wouldn't say my first speaking event in my business is technically my first speaking event because congratulations thank you it feels good and uh, and I've spoken in many places, but to be able to get paid for doing something that I love doing, like talking, is really, really big. And so it really is, it's still all a dream because this is really my first, my first job. And there's so many more that I want to get. There's so many more I got to do research on and figure it out. And I know you'll help me. And I know a lot of people will help me along the way as I help myself. And, but even in this very moment, it's still all a dream. So in, in planning this new business, I'm talking about planning. How do you go about planning for the future of that business? Since you're at the beginning again, again, yes. Consistency. Consistency and hard work. Consistency and hard work. I can't speak to it enough. Uh, it's, it's definitely been rough. I've been having days. I've been calling, hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? But I'm, I'm nonstop because I really want it. 
And so even though it's all a dream, this dream will come true. Dreams do come true. They actually become reality when you really, really want it. And I want this so bad that it might not happen overnight, but I do know that it will happen. It will play out just the way it's supposed to play out. I trust God for that. And but for the most part, I just gotta just stay on top of me. Stay on top of the people that's um around me, the people that can help me, the people that's offering positions, put my running speakers on and go, hand out my flyer, network, talk to as many people as I need to talk to until I find myself landing another job and another one and another one and another one and another one. And another one. And that's the dream. It feels good to be able to be about to live it because I see it happening. I feel it happening. I feel like it's so close to me, I could just grab it. And uh, so it, it won't be easy, but nothing that's worth it comes easy. Well, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. So if, if you could speak to your future self, or, or let's say, your entrepreneur, your veteran entrepreneur self that has owned CD Greenhouse since 2012 could speak to your new entrepreneur self and say, these are the qualities that you need to have to be a success as you see it. What are some of those qualities that a good entrepreneur really needs to have? I would tell myself, hey, Shade, hey, get out there and do some networking. Meet some new people. Open some new doors. Meet. Don't go to the local events you usually go to. Go to those business events. Go meet business-minded people. Go sit yourself in a circle where you want to be. You want to be a millionaire. Go meet some millionaires. You want to build a business so big, go be around big business owners. I would tell myself, don't settle. Don't settle and don't give up. I would, I would say, be kinder, be nicer. I would say, I would say, God got you. God got you. You got you. Believe in yourself. You got this, Shade. You've been here before. You've done this. You have accomplished so many things. Do not be defeated. Stand your ground. Keep your head held high. And stick your chest out. You're gonna make it. Absolutely. Can we get some tissue up here, please? For a sister that is giving her whole heart authentically <laughs> to help inspire someone else who needs to hear this. Thank you. Thank you so much. You really gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> like I got dreams so big. And when I talk to people, they don't even believe them. I hold myself to such a high standard because I know that I'm bigger than this city. I do thank this city for all I've been through. Even the worst things have made me who I am today. And but I know I'm going to make it. I'm determined. I'm determined. And I just want to just say, put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of how you're feeling, stay on top of you. I can't even say that I haven't been this stuff. But I'm still here. I still managed to make it here today. Throughout all the trials and tribulations, through all the things that I've been going through. And so... If you're looking at this and you need some inspiration and you're looking for some motivation, 
Look in the mirror. Look at yourself and pray. I think that is wonderful advice for any day of the week, no matter how you're feeling. And I think people would be curious to know, because obviously you just said it's about prayer, it's about staying connected to the creator. What other things do you do on a daily just to stay inspired? I listen to a lot of gospel. Um, I do affirmations. Affirmations are very, very important because it's you talking to you. It's you reading something that you needed to hear. Because if you're looking for somebody else to pat you on the back, you're in the wrong business already. You have to be your biggest supporter. And so my day-to-day, I wake up, I look in the mirror, I tell myself, it's me versus me. I do have a podcast called The Up Next Show. So if you watch, then you know I always say, me versus me. If it's you against you, who can take you down but yourself? So when I get up, I talk to myself, and it's okay to talk to yourself. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, you talk to yourself, you're crazy. Crazy people are crazy people. Smart people talk to themselves. And so I would say, look in the mirror, let yourself know it's me versus me. They got great affirmations online if you want to Google any. Sometimes you can write down your own affirmations because everybody life situation is different. So you might can't look on Google and see an affirmation that fits you. Sometimes you have to make one for yourself. I am Shade Jones. I will win. Today will be a great day. I will smile all day. Great things will happen. And then just believe in it. Because you got to remember the power is in the tongue. Everything you speak is, is, is what you're speaking into life. Energy is real. And so when you're speaking these things out, that's just you speaking your life and, and your, your future into life, into the air, to even make it, you know, the dream. Do affirmation. Pray. Talk to yourself. It's okay to talk to others, but talk to yourself. Everybody don't see it the way you see it. Everybody don't feel the way you feel about your dream. Everybody is not passionate about the things that you're passionate about. And so you have to really just stay on top of you. Me versus me. Is that a t-shirt I can get to me? I definitely can make you one of those t-shirts. That's right. (laughs) Me versus me. I love that. Thank you. So is there, I mean, you've given so many gems of advice, but is there any last thoughts of advice that you would give an entrepreneur uh, that's, you know, kind of early in their stage of discovering their, their talents and their gifts? I would say get a mentor. I would, I would say get a mentor. I would say don't make it harder on yourself because it's always somebody who went through it before you. And there's genuine people out here that's willing to help you just because they want to see the next person win. I'm one of those genuine people. Plus, I feel like if I wash this hand, you wash that hand, and we both wash the face, it work out. So while you coming to me, and I'm helping you take the steps necessary that you need to take to go on into your business. There's no telling what, what I might stumble upon for myself. And I think that a lot of people always forget that. People be like, oh, no, I'm not helping nobody. I'm not helping nobody. I got my own stuff going on, not even knowing that. You probably could reach a new height because your smart not my, is not my smart. The things that you know are not the things that I know. So in the process of me helping you, you could possibly be helping me too. And if more people looked at it like that, you would have more mentors, more people 
we're willing to, to motivate and, and help the next person out. Get yourself a mentor if you can. Preferably somebody that's in the same line of work that you're trying to get into. Um, check your resources. Go down to City Hall. Come down to the North Public Library. There's resources literally everywhere. But if you don't go look for them, they won't just come falling in your lap because you have to establish yourself. Even as an established businesswoman, nothing ever fell in my lap. So you definitely have to go out and, and do the research. Right now, I know I keep saying Ann. Y'all don't know Ann. Ann is my new friend, okay? I call Ann. I text Ann. I email Ann. And she's something like a mentor to me right now. And she always say, well, I don't even really know either, but I'm going to figure it out. Check what I just said. I don't even know either, but I'm going to figure it out. But you see how she helping me and she learning something new? That's what I mean by mentoring. That's what I mean by one hand washing the other and both washing the feet. She'd be like, I don't know what that is. Let me Google it. I'm, can I call you back? Can I text you back? Can I email you back? And I'm like, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have somebody that can help you. Don't try to do it by yourself. Nobody can do it by themselves. I can tell you my hardest days was trying to figure all of these things out by myself. And it didn't land me nowhere but by myself in business by myself and get you somebody it'll take you further it's okay to want to be independent it's okay to want to stand on your own too and say i did this by myself you can actually still say it because nobody can walk for you don't think that because a person helped you they can take credit for the work that you put in them are your own two feet and it's okay to get help. If you're a new business owner and you're watching this, don't do it alone. Nobody could do it alone. That was the worst thing I ever did was trying to do it by myself because it took me longer to get where I am. I probably would have been here a long time ago if I just said, do the research, resource, reach out, talk to people. I'm like, no, I'm going to figure it out. 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 Even to this day, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay? So, uh, get you some help. It's okay. You'll still win. You can still take your own credit. You can still be your own person. Don't do it by yourself. It's impossible. Even though they say nothing is impossible, it's genuinely impossible because you are only one person you can't be here and there at the same time you can really only be in one place so if i'm here speaking and i don't have help nothing's getting done a young lady called me before i came down here she said i need to get a bathing suit from your store so i reached out to a good friend of mine and said hey you go over to the store and serve this client. I, obviously, I couldn't do it by myself. I needed help. So I happened to actually get a chance to be here. My client actually got a chance to get the bathing suit, and everybody was happy. Thank you. Now, what's the name of that podcast again? The Up Next Show. And, and where can we find the Up Next Show, and when is the next one coming up? Well, we was on YouTube. We are actually going back into filming um, within like the next two weeks. Uh, this is, y'all can't see her, but my manager is here. Her name is Clarissa. Clarissa is a really, really good friend of mine. I have known her since I was nine years old. I'm 34. Good friends. Good friends are very, very hard to find. Um, I was speaking earlier and I told the people that she see more in me than I see in myself. And she has so many beliefs and she be having so many things set up for me. But the thing she keep pushing is me going back to do my show. Because I had actually stopped during the pandemic. And I haven't really been on. But in about two weeks, we will be 
back up and running. Um, I used to interview almost anybody because everybody is up next. You could be an artist. If you're doing art, you're up next. If you are a rapper, you're up next. And But at the end of the show, I used to always tell people, even though you're on an up next show, you up right now. Your time is now because you're already here. And, uh, and I'll keep you posted. And I'm excited to be going back on the radio. I'm excited to be back in the podcast. I'm actually excited to be in business. Also, uh, after being in the clothing boutique for 10 years, I know I have told people, and but I just keep saying it because I want people to look on to the next things. As I'm looking on to the next things, I'm evolving. I'm in my evolving stage. And as I evolve, I am coming out of the clothing business, not the business. I am coming out of the storefront of the clothing business. I am still going to be closed online. But as far as the store go, I would like it to be office space slash my podcast space because that's the only way I can actually see it through. People think that when you're taking on so many projects at a time, you're getting a lot done, but really you're getting nothing done at all. Because in order to get something done, you have to put your 100% into it. So if I have 40% into the clothing business and 60% into the podcast business, one of them will fail. Instead of failing, I choose to evolve. Still keep the same location. You can always find me there no matter what you want to talk about, whether it's a clothing business, a radio business, whatever the business may be, I'll still be in location. But I'm just kind of evolving from the clothing business, going into something that I enjoy doing, which is just talking to my people, motivating y'all, giving y'all the education, teaching y'all, and learning new things, meeting new people a new idea, you know, I'd be having everything mapped out and somebody would say, hey, you should do this. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. I never even thought about it. But it's for me in that business. And so I just want to just put my 100% into my next movement so that way I can get 100% back. And I'm excited to be evolving. That is exciting. It is because times are changing. But the people aren't. And if you don't change with the time, you will be left behind. Those are facts. Those are facts. So how can people stay in touch with you? Well, lately I've been loving the email thing. (laughs) I've been loving the email thing because not only is it professional, it's easier for me to keep in line uh organization usually when you see an email send an email it usually ask you a subject you know you already know what you're dealing with before you're dealing with it versus a pm it'd be like all over the place um the phone which a lot of people call but i'll be screening calls you get what i'm saying so if you don't even leave a message then we never really get in contact with each other so i would say if you wanted to contact me email me my email is C is in Charlie, H is in Hat, A is in App, Barbie, like the Barbie doll, B A R B I E, the number zero at gmail.com. One more time. <laughs> C as in Charlie, H is in Hat, A is in Apple, Barbie, like the Barbie doll, the number zero at gmail.com. Thank you so much for a wonderful conversation. Please join me in thanking. Shade Jones for a wonderful conversation today and for your authentic voice that will just spread around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for not only having me, thank you for helping me. You're welcome. You are a great resource. Thank you. I want y'all to know if y'all watching, she is not only just a great resource, you are a great person. Your energy is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I get serious. Thank, no, I, I really appreciate that. I don't, it, it'd be hard for me to talk to people, but with you, 
you make it so easy. Even Yay. as you see me getting nervous, you're giving me like a little eye contact, a few smiles, making me feel better about the situation. And But I want to tell you, stay great. Thank you. Stay great. We and definitely keep- have to be great because playing small is not helping it's anybody. Not That's right. You keep motivating people. You keep pushing. But we'll be on tour soon together. Okay. You'll be on a flyer <laughs> coming to a neighborhood near, near you. you. <laughs> I'm going to turn it back over to Ann Schatz and the York Public Library team. And this has been one more installation of Creative Games. And we're looking forward to the next edition and the final interview with Lindsay Holmes, which is coming up after the 4th of July, but I'm sure Anne will talk about that, right, Anne? Yes, I, I will. You know it. Um, Sade, that was so that was so good. You shared so much advice that I personally was like, I want to write this stuff down. Like, I want to see it in a book almost, like, just another thought. But um, thank you so much for sharing that. And um, yeah, from what you were saying about calling the library, that's I want to remind everybody, uh, librarians love to help people. They lo- like that's why they go into this most of the time. They just like like to find things out and do research and help you get what you need. So it's a really good resource if you're ever stuck and you just don't know exactly what direction to go to. Check out your local public library or any library, really. Um, yeah. So again, this um, this has been recorded and it's going to be available on YouTube next week. Um, and beha- on behalf of our director, Jocelyn Bowling Dixon, and the Board of Trustees President, Dr. Lauren Wells, we thank you all for joining us this evening. And again, many thanks to the PNC Foundation for sponsoring this event. And yes, I do want to add coming next Wednesday, July 6th at 6 p.m., is the sixth and final conversation in the Creative Game series. Kimberly will interview Lindsay C. Holmes, owner of the Usable Tech Company and Financially Stronger, LLC, for a conversation about monetizing your creative work. I also invite you to follow the Newark Public Library, the Newark Business Hub, and find Sade online um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.